So throughout today, we've heard about wonderful talks about innovation and motivation. And in our last speaker, we actually heard about the parts of the brain that control these functions. And that's what I do in my everyday job. So I understand how the brain connects, how diseases that affect the neurons in your brain, how they deteriorate and can affect your motivation and your inspiration. But that's not what I'm going to talk to you about today. I'm going to talk to you about another passion of mine, which is STEM education. And before I get there, I need to tell you a little bit about my journey and how I've gotten to where I am today. So like many of you, I grew up in the rural upper Midwest. I lived on a farm for most of my childhood. Um, the nearest town was probably about three miles away, and it had about 100 people. So middle of absolutely nowhere, right? So when I was a freshman in high school, my mom said, you deserve more. You kids deserve more. And so she moved us to the neighboring arch rival school. And the reason she moved us there was because it had one of the best science teachers in the state of Missouri. And that man changed my life. He made me who I am today. And I get emotional every time I talk about him because he really had such a, a formative impact on my life. And so he allowed us to do things in the classroom, like experiment. We didn't learn in pillars, so we didn't learn biology and math. When we were doing an experiment in our classroom, we could run down to the English classroom and grab something off of the shelf. We could run down to the physics classroom and grab a piece of equipment that we might be using in our biology uh, classroom or experiments. He was a certified scuba dive instructor, so he allowed us to um, become certified scuba divers. And you're like, where in the heck are you going to scuba dive in Missouri, right? So he would drive us to Florida every year for our checkout dives. We had a contract with the state park there that we could collect anything that we could catch in the state park and bring back to our classrooms. So my senior year in high school, I caught a stingray that I brought back, who happened to live in the, sh in the tank with our, our nurse shark, because every high school classroom has one of those, right? And remember, this is a classroom. My class size was about 45 kids, right? Ag was the big thing in our town. And so he's telling these kids, think outside the box. You don't have to be confined by the environment that you live in or your community. You can think big, and you can be the same person as a kid growing up in New York City. And so he pushed me to go to college in upstate New York, where I got interested in neuroscience, and that was where it led me professionally. But as I've moved into my career as a scientist, I've gone back to this idea of how do we teach and train STEM students. And so I want you guys to stop and think for a second, what does it mean to be a STEM student? You know, some of you know probably what STEM stands for, and we're going to go into that. But I want you to look at the people next to you, the people behind you, and hopefully by the end of my talk today, I will convince you that you're all STEM students. And there's a reason behind that. So I think the first thing that we have to think about is, why would I care about STEM, right? I'm going to tell you that STEM makes you innovative thinkers. It makes you creative. It helped drive questions. And so it's not about those pillars and those contents and the way that you were probably taught in high school. It's about thinking outside the box and no matter what you do. So whether you're a cosmetology student, whether you're an ag student, whatever area you're in, you can be a STEM thinker and a STEM learner. So let's kind of step back for a second and talk about what does STEM mean. So we probably mostly have heard of STEM as the acronym. So it's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You've probably heard people debate that, oh, don't forget about the arts. So we need to talk about STREAM. We need to talk about STEM 2, where we incorporate medicine. We need to talk about SQL or sweater and make sure that everybody's included in this program. The, the uh, most interesting one I recently heard was, let's talk about meth, <laughs> right? So mathematics, engineering, theoretical physics, and health. Right? So everybody wants their piece to be at the table and represented in whatever education program we're talking about. But what I want to talk about today is how can we move beyond this acronym? And let's step back and think about STEM as you would in a plant. So a STEM in a plant is the foundation of that plant. It's the base on which the plant grows. A lot of the leaves come off of that plant. And so I want us to kind of think of that as the concept for what STEM education should be. Now, I've been fortunate since I uh, took my position in the state of South Dakota to be a part of a number of very innovative education programs, including Sanford Promise. But one of them that I want to draw your attention today to is a program called South Dakota Innovation Lab. 
And this is a way to actually start working with teachers in the state of South Dakota to change this conception of what STEM means and how we train our students in the classroom to break down those walls, to bring innovation into the classroom, and to train critical thinkers for tomorrow. And it's a lot of these concepts and ideas about what STEM really means that I've learned from my partners in the South Dakota Innovation Lab, and particularly some folks at the past organization in uh, uh, Columbus, Ohio. So let's step back now and think about this concept of what STEM can mean. And so let's think about STEM more than just that acronym, that it's a holistic way of teaching, that it's a holistic way that we can deliver education, that we can uh, build upon this concept of either the scientific method or the engineering de design cycle in everything we do, right? So in the engineering design cycle, you come up with an idea, something that you need to build or design, you execute or develop a plan in order to build that thing. You build it, and then you say, oh, it needs some tweaks, it needs some changes, I need to modify, and you go in this continuous cycle until you have the ideal product design. And I would argue, as many of you probably were taught in high school, that scientists use the scientific method every day in, in their jobs. I don't walk into the lab and say, I have a hypothesis, and today I will test it. Now, we, we probably function much more like an engineer, that we work in that engineer design cycle in order to achieve something. But I would argue that every single one of you use that, hopefully, in problem solving in your everyday life. If from anywhere from, what am I going to wear this morning, to my flat car's got a flat tire, how am I going to fix that? And so I want you to start thinking that in everything you do, how do you use that, that STEM approach that, that holistic engineer design cycle to be able to solve your problems. And hopefully, you'll start thinking about STEM as more than just that acronym, and that it's actually, it refers to a whole dis, uh, a transdisciplinary approach to delivering education. So a way that you can bring from English and math and history and science all into one classroom in the way that we learn. So if we go back now and we redefine what STEM education means, I want you to think of it as that main ascending axis in education that supports knowledge, innovation, and student access. So now think of it as that plan. It becomes that support. So your next question might be, why do we care about this in South Dakota? I would argue that every single one of you wants the best for your children, your grandchildren, and your peers to learn in the best way possible. And so many times I hear from older folks in our community well, I learned from a textbook. I learned in pillared classrooms. That's good enough. It was good enough for me, so why wouldn't it be good enough for my students? I would argue that the world is changing. We can't be insular in South Dakota. We can't restrict how our students are learning, and we need to continually think outside the box so that we're competitive in a global marketplace. And so I would argue that we can't just be confined to the way that we've done it in the past, that we have to change, we have to be innovative, we have to cha train critical thinkers. I put up this statistic from Change the Equation um, to think about sort of what sort of employees do we need in South Dakota. So the number three, top three um, job demanding areas in the state of South Dakota are travel and tourism, IT infrastructure, and STEM related healthcare jobs. In the global marketplace, over the last few years, we've seen a terrible recession. It's getting better. So as of last week, I think we're at about a 5.5% unemployment rate. South Dakota has weathered that storm very well. We stayed below the national average. We probably have about a 2.5% unemployment rate. But STEM-related jobs in the state of South Dakota have never dipped. There are about 2.7, according to these statistics, jobs in STEM-related fields for every single one employee applying in the state of South Dakota. So if you have those critical thinking skills, if you can think outside the box, there's a job for you in South Dakota. I will tell you even more that in healthcare related STEM jobs, there are about 7.4 jobs for every one person applying. So there's a job for you if you can get to that point. Um, and so I kind of want to go back to this big picture question of why should you care? You're citizens of tomorrow. You're going to be training, hopefully, informing citizens, of the future citizens of the state of South Dakota. And I want you to, to think critically. I want you to think and want the best for everybody that you're helping train and really think about what, what that education is going to look like and how you can help inform and change that so that you become critical thinkers, they become critical thinkers, and they're able to rise to the top. Thank you.